Hey everybody on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining another CCA Live. This series is for the rest of the year or the rest of the month. And we're talking about tis the season for trouble. And if you are busy like I am, which is not seasonal necessarily for me, you probably need ways to keep your dogs busy. So it tends to be a little cooler than we want to get out, a little darker than we want to get out when we get home from work. And honestly, we just get tired of fighting all the traffic, right? So today I wanted to share with you some tips about things you can stuff so you can prepare for busy seasons like we are in now. I'm Paula Nowak. I am the owner and head trainer of Canine Country Academy out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. And I am excited to share these tips with you. These are things that I tend to forget myself as well, but it's a good idea to have these things ready so that way when things creep up on you and things get busy, then you're ready to go. So today's topic is what you can stuff to keep your dog busy. Now there are many, many things you can do to keep your dog busy and out of trouble, but I thought today would be a good, excuse you Curly, <laughs> she is ready. I thought today would be a good day because a lot of people tomorrow are going to have company, you're going to be busy hosting and enjoying the festivities. Hopefully he'll be quiet. We might have to give him a calm to give him something to do here in a second. Um, <laughs> did not plan on him coming back inside. Um, but <laughs> what we want to do is we want to make sure that we plan ahead by using some of these tools. So one tool is definitely going to be any kind of calm, stuffable. This is a puppy calm, not just because of the size, but, be, but also I'm going to let you be out here. How about you go out there? Bye. That way. Bye. <laughs> Give him something else to do so he doesn't bug us. See, sometimes you just have to gate him out, right? This is real life. This is why I'm doing a live broadcast. Um, so what we have is a puppy Kong. And I use these for my little guys too because maybe they're not as strong at chewing. But this is for babies because it's a softer Kong. If you have pretty mild chewer, then you want the red Kong. If you have a mega chewer, you want the black Kong. And I have a variety, it just depends on which dog I'm preparing a Kong for. And um, you wanna make sure to get the right size for your dog. So if you have a puppy, and you know they're gonna be big, like a Great Dane or a German Shepherd, it's probably better to go ahead and get a larger Kong than investing in a baby Kong straight away because they're gonna grow out of this really quick. If you have a small dog, then you can invest in this and maybe some other small ones and you'll use it for the rest of their life. What's important to know about these is there are more than one thing you can stuff a Kong with. What do most people think about when um, they're stuffing Kongs? Well, you may have guessed it. Their number one thing is peanut butter or Kong products. There are so many things you can put into a Kong. And uh, if you've ever thought that the only thing to put in a Kong is peanut butter, put peanut butter in the comments down below because there is way more things you can put inside a Kong. And I have a few of those things to show you. But before I jump in, I wanted to make sure to tell you other things you could stuff. I prefer Kong, it's my go-to. They have a bunch of different products. They have bones you can stuff, and just on and on. It's just a fantastic company. But the other things you can stuff are tracheas. So if you give your dog natural bones, which we highly recommend, a trachea is a good option. Um, this is something you can stuff. Any of these things, aside from Kong, if you know your dog is safe with Kong, you really want to supervise them. Safety first, we don't want them choking on anything, getting their tongue stuck, which they shouldn't in these products, but I don't want anything bad to happen to your dog. Um, and maybe they chew things up that you didn't realize they were as intense a chewer. But I like stuffing um, tracheas, old marrow bones. You know, if you have a long marrow bone, maybe you purchased it and it was already stuffed, well, you can restuff it with some goodies. So lots of options. You could also use an ice cube tray and make some snacks. This is something I would probably use more in summer because you can stuff it and then you can let them go outside and enjoy the goodie because there's no wrapper, right? There's no containment or in their kennel with something that's washable like a towel because we don't want it to be getting all over your house, right? The other thing, I got this in a pet box. I don't remember which one, it's been a while. 
Um, and honestly, I haven't used it, so I'm probably going to use it for a human thing because <laughs> I've got some ideas for humans too. But any of these silicone molds are really nice too. Again, this is something that they're going to want to enjoy in a secure area that you can easily clean or outside. But you can put goodies in here, um, more liquefied, and then freeze it, and then they can enjoy it. So let me show you some of the things that you can stuff or use for stuffing. And really, the possibilities are endless. What I did today, in all honesty, is I just opened up my fridge and I was like, what do I got in there that my dog could eat? That's pretty much what I do, unless I have a specific recipe that I want to try. My dogs aren't super picky, so they'll eat pretty much whatever. Always taste test for your dog <laughs> before you, <laughs> excuse me, Curly, oh my goodness. Let me just give him one. And that'll solve all our problems. Let me show you one first. This one's gross. I don't even remember what it is. That's how long it's been. But it probably has, I'll show you guys, some cheese in there and some peanut butter. This is a senior Kong. Curly's a senior, and I'm right here, so this will keep him quiet. He wasn't supposed to be part of the broadcast today. Sit. Excellent. Oh, there you go. He's like, ooh la la. So I'm going to let him have that so we can have some peace and quiet together. Um, and feel free to post comments down below of anything regarding uh, troublesome behaviors. But specifically today, we're talking about things you can stuff in a Kong or make other edible things for your dogs. So before I was so rudely interrupted, um, I just pick whatever. But for your dog, if they have an allergy, a sensitivity, or you just don't know what they really like, I would make sure to give them a little taste of the thing you're going to give them before you take the time and stuff a Kong. Some very basic things you can do with Kong, aside from peanut butter, is you can take their kibble, if you feed them a kibble food, hopefully it's high quality, and you can hydrate it a little bit with water or some sort of broth. Try to get a low sodium broth, and then put that in a bowl, and then you can spoon it into your Kong, and that way it's basically their dinner. One thing I failed to mention early on is that adding a Kong to your dog's diet is a great idea, but if you're worried about adding calories, maybe they can't afford extra calories, you know, you're trying to cut some weight off of them, um, what you want to do is just make sure to think about how many calories they're getting in a day and then use a portion of that for the Kong versus adding something. If you have very young, high energy dogs and you don't have to worry about calories, then by all means, stuff this with whatever you want. Um, with peanut butter, it's high calorie. Um, a lot of the other things I have here on my countertop are high calorie. So you just wanna be mindful of that. But kibble with some broth or just some water and stuff it in your Kong, they are gonna be perfectly happy with that. If your dog has never had a Kong or never had a stuffed something or other, you want to make sure not to freeze it the first time they have it because they might get really frustrated and decide that whatever you stuffed is not worth it. So you might put some kibble inside here, maybe you smear a little cream cheese, um, a little peanut butter, and then let them have it without freezing it. And then as they get better, you can freeze it for short amounts of time. I say, you know, once your dog's good at it, the minimum is two hours and then you can let them have it. But it's a good idea to always have two Kongs per dog ready to go. If you have someone stop by, you have uh, maybe the termite people come and you need to crate your dogs. It's just a great option to have a little something on hand. All right, so we talked about, you know, being careful of calories, safety, make sure to supervise your dog. Let's look at some things that I had in my fridge that I might give my dog and put it in the Kong after I make sure they like it. Something. I use as um, kind of a, a combo with other things is pumpkin. So this is just plain canned pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling, folks. Just plain pumpkin. Um, once I open it, I keep it in a container in the fridge so I can just use it as I need it. It's great because it can help them if they have digestive issues, maybe they're um, you know, having some constipation. You can add a little bit just be mindful when you first start with something new that you don't want to upset their stomach and always consult with your vet if you're concerned that it might create pancreatitis or something like that. So pumpkin is a great binder. It's something that's low calorie and I can just stuff in the Kong and mix in with things. Your traditional treats 
whether homemade or purchased, you can step in the Kong. Sometimes mixing that in makes the kibble or the other thing that's not as exciting a little more exciting. So if I put bacon treats in my Kong, that might be kind of exciting. Cream cheese, I had mentioned this. So if you are worried about calories, don't necessarily fill it with cream cheese. Don't fill it with peanut butter, but you could smear it and, and then freeze it. So it doesn't have to be stuffed necessarily. It won't last as long if it's not stuffed, but it gives them a little something to do. For the bottom of the Kong, you know, if you're using a wet, um, more soppy, you know, maybe the pumpkin or something watered down, you might want to put something at the end. So maybe um, a peanut, right? You could just drop a peanut in there. Um, I had some little cookies here somewhere. I put out so many things or just to drop a treat down in it and then fill it. That way there's not a bunch of stuff getting stuck at the bottom that they might not be able to get. And then you're stuck cleaning it. I clean this with a baby bottle brush. So just unless, unless your dog's really good at cleaning these out, but you still need to clean it and sanitize it. So I'll use a bottle brush to clean it out. You can also put in some cheese, so maybe a little Colby. You can cut that up. You could use shredded cheese and mix it together. I tend to mix my stuff versus parfait it <laughs> and stack it. Whatever floats your boat, be creative. I think it's a fun thing that you can do for your dog. If you have children, this is a great activity for them. Really age, it doesn't matter if they could you know, be there and help you at the counter. It's great for them to help stuff the Kongs. I also have some turkey breast. I actually bought this for the dogs, believe it or not. Um, I use it for treats, but I could also step it in my Kong. It's just easy, it's healthy, and it's ready to go. I don't have to think about it. And then of course, peanut butter. So that's pretty much what I had in my fridge. I also had a little bit of chicken I could have pulled out. You know, whatever you have for leftovers that doesn't have a lot of onion, or it has no onion actually, um, not a lot of garlic, you know, things your dog's not allowed to have, do your research before you stuff it, but you'll be surprised how much stuff you can put in a Kong. Um, with these guys, I could um, maybe liquefy it a little further, the pumpkin, and then put a couple of treat pieces in and then freeze that, or same thing with my uh, ice cube tray. Now for storing it, you might wanna go to the dollar store and get a little basket that you can put in your freezer. You could also, that's kind of the best way to do it. I, for some reason, must have traveled with this at some point, and so I have a little Ziploc bag. Just whatever you need to do to keep your, you know, fridge or freezer clean, and uh, that way you can have a bunch of Kongs ready. It's a good idea to have a prep day where you get all the stuff ready and just do it all at once, and you don't have to think about it too often, and you can just pull them as you need. So do you guys use Kongs? Do you use stuff? Things like tracheas, if so, post yes and tell us what you're putting in those things because I would be curious to add more things for my dog. Maybe it's something I haven't thought of. At our facility, we actually fill Kongs, especially for the first week of class. So in January, we'll be stuffing a lot of Kongs and those give the dogs things to do while the class is kind of settling and it's your first day. It's a good idea to go ahead and bring one with you in case you or your dog are allergic to something that we provide. We try to not just do peanut butter, we try to do things like cream cheese and biscuits, but every dog is different, so we wanna make sure that they have something that they enjoy. All right, so what is good besides peanut butter? So I covered a ton, Jennifer. Um, pumpkin, so if Luna can have pumpkin, that would be something if she likes it too. I like. Um, I know she likes broccoli, so you could steam some broccoli and maybe puree it a little bit and add that, not too much, maybe with a meat that she can have, maybe with um, some pork. Um, I don't know if they make like a pate that doesn't have things that she can't have, but you could just take your own pork and create, I know you're good at this, and make kind of a pate out of it and then stuff it in your Kong. At the bottom, I might put a hard cookie that she can have so that it doesn't get all stuck in there. I find the things that are more um, soft or liquidy tend to get stuck at the bottom and I hate cleaning that out. So um, try those things. If she can have cheese, you can add a little bit of cheese. Um, but there's so many things and I actually have met a dog who does not like peanut butter and so you have to get creative. And pretty much whatever the dog can eat 
as their meal, you can also stuff in there, like her kibble, or um, if you feed freeze-dried food, you can hydrate it, or dehydrated food, you can freeze it. I think Curly has finished his Kong, so I have another Kong to clean after this. But that's a really good question. Most people think it's only Kong products and only peanut butter, but there are so many things. And you don't have to stuff it if you're worried about calories, you can just smear it um, inside and then freeze it and let them have it. If you um, are willing, I, not that everybody would want to do this, I don't mind so much in my house because you know I share it with them and uh, or maybe they share it with me, I don't know. But you know, once your dog is good at getting things out of the Kong, you could divide up the dogs and hide uh, their Kong for them to find, or you can do a couple smaller Kongs or like less filled Kongs and have them find it. We talked about this last week about, you know, hiding their puzzles so you can hide a Kong as well. Just make sure they find it in a reasonable amount of time because I don't want it to get all over your floor. My dogs are really good at cleaning up when the Kong gets a little messy. So I don't worry about it too much, but if you're concerned, you can have them crated. Just don't let your dogs have Kongs together unless you know they're really comfortable with that. We don't wanna create any resource guarding or any squabbles because you know someone got a better Kong than they got, <laughs> that kind of thing. What other questions do you guys have about things you can stuff or different things you can make for your dog to eat and keep them busy? Which Curly right now is destroying a dog bed and that's keeping him busy now. Hey Curly, did you finish your Kong? I don't even know where it went. He hit it on me. <laughs> he's like, I need more Kongs in my life. And even, you know, he's 12. So everybody needs a Kong. That's why they make them for all ages. They're not just for puppies or adolescents. They're for all ages of dogs. Hey Curly, Curly, that's enough, thank you. I know, you've made a big mess. <laughs> all right. Well, if you have any questions after this broadcast, please post them in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you guys are stuffing in your Kongs. And if you've never used a Kong before, let us know when you try it because it's important to give your dogs outlets for their mouth. Some dogs need it more than others. It definitely is a way to release some tension. You know, they're probably, when you're stressed, they're stressed. So giving them an outlet to relieve that stress versus chewing on things you don't want them to, like their dog bed right now. Um, but it's a great opportunity. I'll make sure to stuff this Kong so somebody gets it. And uh, I've got to find my other ones. They, they're hidden somewhere. So thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to take a break tomorrow because most people are celebrating a holiday. And I don't want you to have to feel like you have to tune in. But on Wednesday, we're going to continue our series talking about Tis the Season for Trouble. And if you're starting to notice some trouble this season, please reach out to us. Get in a class. We offer classes for puppies, all the way up to behavioral reasons, whether they're reactive or shy. We want to make sure that we're preventing as much as we can, but also being proactive in resolving any issues. If our group classes are not the best fit or don't fit your schedule, we do offer private lessons in home as well as at our facility, and we would be happy to give you that information. So if you have any additional questions, please post them in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll see you on Wednesday. Bye, everybody.